Hi, I'm Mike Thornton, and in this video, I'm going to show you some of the new features Isotope has added to RX9 and RX9 Advanced. Let's start with Dialog Isolate. Now, at first glance, it may not look any different, but on closer inspection, the drop down menu down here at the bottom has changed, and instead of the different separation algorithms, it now selects the quality level with a choice of both good and best. Well, we'll leave it on best. All the other changes to the Dialog Isolate module are under the hood. It has a brand new machine learning neural network, as they call it, which Isotope have designed to separate the Dialog more effectively than the previous version that they used in RX6 through to RX8. So let's try this out. And here I've got one of my classic test files. It's a clip from a trade show floor interview back in 2012. Hey, it's Russ here at NAMM 2012. I'm back with Bobby Lombardi. Bobby, some people don't know that you were, that you were one of the people behind 11 Rack and all of that kind of stuff. Now, for this demo, I am going to deliberately push this perhaps harder than I would do if this was a real job, just to see what it can actually do. And as before with the older one, there is this sensitivity control. And for this example, I'm going to set this to around 5.8. And although we do have the preview option where we can actually listen to what it's doing. Hey, it's Russ here at NAMM 2012. I'm back with Bobby Lombardi. Bobby, some people don't know that. With some of the modules, the preview option isn't really the top quality. So for this particular example, I'm going to use the compare feature. And you can see now that it's producing a temporary render file. And you'll notice that it is taking perhaps a little bit longer than the older RX6 to RX8 algorithm. But there's no such thing as a free lunch. It takes a bit longer to process it because it's doing a better job. Okay, so now we've got that, we'll change that and label that new. Because what we can also do is there is still the option to use the old legacy algorithm. So if time is tight, and if the audio you're using doesn't need the new algorithm, then you can obviously go back and use the legacy algorithm. So we'll select the original audio and we'll put that into the compare and you can see yeah that's quite a bit quicker typically it's around twice as quick to use the old algorithm as it is to use the new one so we'll label that old and now we can listen to the difference so if we preview the old one Hey, it's Russ here at NAMM 2012. I'm back with Bobby Lombardi. Bobby, some people don't know that you were, that you were one of the people behind 11 Rack and all of that kind of stuff. Are you a... So a let's listen to tell the us all about new one. Hey, it's Russ here at NAMM 2012. I'm back with Bobby Lombardi. Bobby, some people don't know that you were, that you were one of the people behind 11 Rack and all of that kind of stuff. Are you a, a closet rocker? And what you'll be able to hear is although the old one is pretty good... The new one is better. It gets rid of the last bits of the background in that particular example. Next, we're going to take a look at the new complex ambience match option, which is designed to capture real background movement and texture from production audio to create complex fill from ambience that's got movement in it. The original ambience extract option is great, but some of the criticism that's been around is that the audio it produces is a little flat, a little lifeless, perhaps. So for RX9, Isotope set about improving it so that they could extract some ambiences that could have some variety in them. So let's take a look. Here's a clip with some great ambience of a New York street. So this is Broadway and Canal Street, and it's a big shopping district. Very, very busy, lots of people. And there it is. I just looked to my right and immediately there's a sort of, could you call it a gift shop? It's just selling loads of tourist tat, really. So we're going to remind ourselves of what the old one did. So it's extracted the ambience from behind the speech, but there isn't really any movement in it. 
it is static it works well it's I just looked to my good right sense and immediately of the original there's a sort of but there's no movement no sense of change in the background and that's what isotope set out to do with this new complex mode so if we switch to complex mode you'll see now that these three controls are now accessible and we've got ambience threshold we've got movement and we've got randomness so let's just go back to the initial state and one of the things that isotope do recommend is that with the new complex mode that ideally you should find some clean ambience in the track and you might want to select multiple segments which you can do and then use that to teach the algorithm to generate the fill that you're looking for and you can see here now we've got some fill so we can take a listen to that see lots of people and there it is so now we've taught it the algorithm i'm going to remove that selection and as before we're going to render the ambience out see what we get and you can see from the spectrogram there is variation but we can start to hear a bit of the looping that's going on and trust me i have been and tried a whole range of material and i've yet to get any real success with this new complex ambient match option so for me i'm afraid it's back to the static option which is great and very easy to use we hit the learn render and we've got a nice fill track that i can use in the edit let's move on to the dynamic d home now remember this example it has to be said that this d home module was kind of getting a bit along the tooth yes isotope increased the number of harmonics from 8 to 16 but essentially if we're dealing with in our case here in the uk a 50 hertz hum with 16 harmonics we don't even quite get to 1k so although the dhum module essentially is very good at what it does in terms of reducing hum so if we get it to learn the buzz and then we just render that out you can see here that it has dealt with all the low end stuff uh, where all those notch filters were but there's something strange going on with the low end speech and of course it hasn't got rid of all the buzz elements so let's go back to the initial state and we'll switch over to the dynamic version what you'll see here now is we have not 16 but we have up to 1024 bands that we can select again isotope make it clear that with this new dynamic notch filter option in d hum it's important to teach it with some clean in inverted commas hum or buzz and then we can use the learn option and you can see now how it's allocated all these 1024 different bands and it's picked up all the different harmonics that the static option would pick up but it then goes on to pick up all these buzz all this stuff that you can see in the spectrogram so if we now take that and we hit render and there we go let's take a listen we can certainly see that it's done its job for g somehow that news brought a specialness up a gear and brought up a gear her inner strength and there we have it job done if you want to find out what we think about rx9 then do check out the full article on the main production expert website i'll see you again soon